we start with the uh, first with the rehabilitation of the shoulder and um, the main problem is that we have a complex issue because the shoulder is completely with soft tissue in the hanging joint and so it has to be treated very carefully. So very important is the rehabilitation. So you have to do the rehabilitation in the small doses. You have to do it several times during the day. But especially you have to do it alone as a patient in the home treatment. Thank you. Thank you. It has to be it has to be around ten minutes for each training, and the training should be around three to five times a day. So it should be like a team between the physiotherapist and also the patient and the doctor. And you have to to do it every um, every day and you have to monitor the, the physiotherapist. The physiotherapist needs to control the patient and she should motivate it. And always he has to do every two weeks to make a report to the orthopedic surgeon. And the surgeon should see the patient every two weeks and then he should say to the patient everything is working in the right way and the physiotherapist uh, sees the progress and make necessary modifications in the in the um, according to the um, to the operation okay go to the next so now the next very important thing is the measurements of the motion. Measurement of the passive and active range, as well also for the strength, are the tools for the monitoring in the progress. You as a physiotherapist uh, make the documentation. If something not working, you make a readjustment and the consultation with the orthopedic surgeon and especially you have to do always control and motivate the patient if you do the exercise right. So for this, we have a three phases physiotherapy program. Okay, there's <coughs> phase number one. Phase number one is self-assisted exercises with isometric exercises. Then we have three main start exercises in this. These are the, the top exercises. It's, it's very important to do this because this is basic. This is very important to make the shoulder move and it's um, the pendulum the passive external rotation with the stick and the passive elevation. And for this, we're using a pulley. And this pulley you can do on the door and you can use it everywhere you are. This means if you use this three exercise, you have always sure that um, there is no stiffness in the shoulder. And these are like the, the most important exercise for the shoulder. You um, have this, and this are like to do it five times a day for five minutes. And if you do this, this is fantastic. You have to control it as a physiotherapist, mm -hmm. and then it's working very well. Okay, so the next, it's the uh, internal rotation. It's isometric exercise. And, um, you start it after 10 days and for this you can to, um, to remove the stiffness and you can uh, train the muscles and the tendons for this. It's very important. 
And now we go to the next exercise. This is also a picture for a lot of exercise. It's together with the pendulum. You can see the pulley exercise. And these are isometric exercises. And this always starting after day number 10. So the phase number two, it's now self-assistant exercises for activating and stretching the muscles. Here we have some examples. So you can see here with the help of a stick and a soft rubber, in phase number two, we activated and started to train the muscles. Normally we do this after six weeks post-operated. So you have, to, um, you have to do it also very carefully, not to make it too strong at the beginning and then you have to make it more and more a little bit stronger. And you have to control the passive range of the motion so if this improved, um, you can start with stretching exercises, external rotation, internal rotations, and also the concentration on the weak points of the, of the patient. So next, let's, it's phase number three now. So in this, we are stretching and strengthening also the exercise to regain the full range of motion. And we stretch the elevation especially and the external rotation to have it in both sides similar that we have left side and right side in the same style. These are the exercise also from phase number three. So now, uh, standard. So now we have some standard measurements. And um, besides the monitoring, the active and the passive range of motions, we also monitoring and the strength of the elevation. External rotation is also very simple and easy. You can do it, you can see it in the picture. We measure it like this. It's very easy to see how is it working, the elevation, the power of elevation, and also of external rotation. Okay, and now phase number three. For athletes, we have some special program so you can make the measurements in a, um, in a daily report and so you can see actually how you uh, have the progress from the elevation and then you can uh, control it on the left side and also on the right side and then you can see how is it working and is everything coming in a good way with the patient. And uh, now we have also some special targets. So we have the targets that the activity on both sides should be normal. This means left side and right side should be from the movement completely normal. And also the power and the strength should be standardly on both sides the same. Okay, now we have the, the patient, this is him, 
So you need to, before you start with the operation, you have to tell him four months post-operative rehabilitation that he needs five times a day this treatment for five minutes. And it should be done only by the physiotherapist to 5%. This is homework and the main work should be done by the patient at home because you can't go to the patient every day. You have to, you have to um, teach him when he's coming to your clinic, what is exercise, you have to measure it. And then he, she, he needs around, he need around um, 5% only with the physiotherapist. And um, so you have to reduce the cost for the treatment. And so you have um, a lot of work done by the patient, but you have to control it very, very, very strong. And also every week, because if you do something wrong, you have to make some invitation. Okay, so the main pathology of the shoulder The main pathology of the shoulder are impingement syndrome, rotator cuff tear, instability, fracture, proximal humerus fracture from the glenoid, the AC joint dislocation, and also the glenohumeral and AC joint osteoarthritis. So now you see how near is treating. Near describes the different stages of the impingement syndrome. Stage one is reversible, edema and hemorrhage. Stage number two is fibrosis and tendinitis. Stage number two is fibrosis and tendinitis two. So stage one, you have a treatment, a local treatment of the pain, four to five days, no manual therapy. Then you start gentle and passive self-assisted exercise like we offer this in phase number one. In stage two from the impingement, tendinitis and fibrosis, we working with heat, ultrasound, manual interior glenoid humeral spectrum, isometric self-assistant stabilization exercises. After six months of failed physiotherapy, consider surgical intervention of atroscopic subacromial decompression. So now you can see how is it before and then after the decompression. So the partial and complete rotator cuff tear. So for the first six weeks, wait now, I have it to make it more in this place. So for the first six weeks to 12 week, we start with phase two. So activate and assisted exercise and stretching exercise. And we are monitoring the progress of the active and passive motion. Assisted with physiotherapy and manual therapy twice a week. And for this, we don't need any heavy exercise because otherwise we get problems if we make uh, heavy exercise with, uh, with the muscles and with the tendons. So we have now the rotator cuff tear surgery, small to middle size, 
tier for the first six weeks. Wait, I have to switch on the lights. So we start with the phase number three, stretching and stretching with self-assisted exercise. This means also five times a day, not more than five to 10 minutes. That's very important. Local physiotherapy we do twice a day. The measurements and the strength and monitoring of both sides is also very important. So rotator, rotator cuff tear surgery, small and middle size. It takes around six to 12 weeks. And we um, start with phase number two, monitoring the progress and active and passive motions. Again, so it's again a rotator cuff for small to middle size. We have it here, and now we come to the instability. So here you can see the case. It's a bankard lesion. In case of a bankard, we repair with a normal capsular operation. And then we start with uh, physiotherapy. We usually start with phase number one, passive self-assisted exercise after two weeks. And then we make a local physiotherapy. And we start the next phase after four weeks. And then after eight weeks, we start with the phase number three. So, and for the open inferior, what is this? Open inferior capsular shift. In case of this, we start with uh, phase number one. And then we have the atroscopic inferior capsular shift again here, how we did the operation. Now we can see how we make the fixation of the patient. The fixation is working with a special gips. You can see it here on these pictures. The patient is usually for around three to six weeks inside the, inside the gips. Okay, and then we have also inferior capsular shifting surgery. We start phase one after six weeks for one week, and then we ask phase number two one week later, and phase number three after one week later. Okay, so now we have fractures. When you have an open fracture and um, you have to, it's very hard to wear an intentional fixation. So we start phase number one after around two weeks. Okay. Total reverse the shoulder. You can see it's a total reverse and now You make an anatomical total shoulder. We start with phase number one after six weeks. And you can't do this rotation for six weeks. Phase number two and three after six weeks. So the fracture of the transios fixations 
immobilization for three weeks, phase one after three weeks, phase two after four weeks, and then we start phase number three after X weeks. And so now very important, you have to know the exact pathology of the case when you are the physiotherapist. You have to speak to the orthopedic surgeon about the surgery, adapt the program inside the clinic work, treat the patient and control his homework, it's very important. Inform the surgeon if you have the progress and if there are some problem, you should talk to them also. Okay, thank you. And greetings from Cologne. I hope you can hear me well. Uh, if there are any questions, you can you can uh, talk to me. Okay. Thank you very much, Doctor.